Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going through some questions about what residency has been like. Is residency everything I thought it would be? What I ordered versus what I'm getting. So I've done three whole months in TGY1. I'm like, where is this time going to? Please slow down. I don't want to be a senior yet. But anyways, but first question is, what is my typical week like? Like time off and stuff. Honestly, it depends on the month. So we do like week, like our schedule is in four weeks. So if I'm on inpatient, first thing is going to be like sign out, taking sign out from the night team. So work would start at seven. I wake up six because I live close to the hospital. I'm usually like able to get there in time. Seven o'clock is sign out. Then sign out would typically like take five to 10 minutes depending on like the volume of patients. So it's like, okay, the patients that you left the day before, how did they do overnight, any updates and stuff. So that's like um, the first thing you want to know. And then are there any new admissions to your team? Did they admit anybody? You know, they just give like a brief run through like of the overnight event. Then typically, um, typically just go to your like your workstation, pre-chat. Pre-chat pre -chat can take anywhere from an hour to two hours to three. Well, let me just say average two hours, depends on your speed. Obviously like my first um, week on floors now nah, i wasn't fast especially when you have new patients pre-chatting is like a whole different conversation at least the most efficient way that i've learned is um you know anyways you want to check the results overnight like overnight like morning naps you want to check um medications especially if like there's a medication yeah, you your patient really has to be on or maybe they've been refusing it and you, you have to just check oh did they get this medication overnight blah 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 consults that you placed yesterday that maybe they had not been seen by the time you went home you kind of want to check who has the endocrinologist said? What has the nephrologist said? Blah blah blah. And nursing reports sometimes, like just trying to like see what's up and then go around on my patient. So checking with them, how did they sleep? Did they have a bowel movement? Are they eating okay? Are they sleeping okay? Just you know, how things have been. The, the questions are obviously going to be tailored to what the person is there for. And then rounds. Rounds are different depending on the attending. Some people do bedside rounds. Some people do rounds in the workstation and then we go see the patient. So different things. Um, rounds, some attendings by nine, some people by 10. Anyways, um, rounds take as long as they should, one hour, two hours, three hours, depending on the volume of patients and complexity. And then um, from 11.30ish, at least rounds should be the first, at least we should be um, rounding up on the rounds um, so that we get time to put in orders that we're supposed to. Also depends on efficiency. So most times I've seen some residents, they will like put in the orders as the, like, the attending is like talking and we're discussing. Like, for, for example, things like consults. You kind of want your consult to go early so that people will see it and see the patients early and stuff. Anyways, all those things take as long as they should. By 12, all work has to stop go to noon conference for one hour, lecture by maybe attending a fellow, something, you know, just one hour protected time for learning with lunch. And then one o'clock, noon conference is over, you, join, you go wrap up your things. Four o'clock, if you're on short call, you go and sign out to the people on long call, they will be there till seven. And then by seven, if you're on long call, you'll be there till seven. And seven, you sign out to the night team, and then that continues. Right now, I'm on my primary care block, two weeks of primary care, so I'm just going to the clinic, clinic by 8. So from 8.20ish to, let's say, no, to 12, I'm seeing patients. The number of patients depends on how many patients we're having, in, like we're going to have a clinic that day, and then they go to um, noon conference, then we'll come back by 1, 1 15. We have like a little 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes talk on an ambulatory topic, so like maybe how to manage hypertension in the clinic, um, what to do with your, your patient on anticoagulation in the clinic and things like that. And then you see patients till five, depending on how many patients you have again. So today I came home like four because I didn't have patients this afternoon. So I was there, like we just did like a talk on lung cancer with my attending and then I went home. So as I said, it's going to depend on um, where you're at. If you're an inpatient, my program does six days on and one day off. So either you're going to get a Saturday off or Sunday off. In the ICU, they try to give us one day off for every week in the heaviest rotations. So I have not done ICU yet. I don't know what their day typically is like. Now that I'm on primary care, nobody goes to the doctor's office in the weekend. So I'm on primary care, so I have my Saturday and my Sunday off. So it's gonna depend on what rotation you are on. Initial challenges faced by IMG 
PGY1. Hmm. Honestly, I think this is supposed to be like a whole different conversation. I think the first thing would be epic, like the EMR, especially like if you're not used to the EMR and also even if you're used to the EMR, which one were you using? So I think epic is usually like the first thing and they get it. They, they told us when we came in, say the first few months are just for you to understand systems, to understand how things work in the hospital. Like that's what everybody's trying to figure out, where to find this, who to talk to about this. Um, how rounds work, the dynamics, like we didn't have case managers in Nigeria at least. I didn't see case managers who shall work like they are part of the team. Pharmacists round with the team, so those kind of dynamics. But I think the biggest one would be epic really. And as an intern, you are shielded from a lot of things. Like nobody is like really just throwing you into the work and say, oh, you're alone. No, you're always going to have like a residence. So I think that's supervision, that's covering. It makes things easy. But yeah, I think the biggest challenge would be yeah Mara, but right now it's a lot better and there are always going to be people to let you know like how to put in orders and how to do things so you kind of figure that out and then focus on like cleaning the medicine i think maybe i should like do a whole conversation on challenges because that's like the one thing that i'm remembering j1 visa process i will talk about j1 in another video um, practicing outside and here. Well, the medicine is the same, right? Like, people are diabetic everywhere, people have hypertension everywhere. I think the differences I've noted, I think I've kind of alluded to one, is team dynamics. The people that make up the team, the pharmacists, the attendants, the residents, the case uh, manager, the social work, PT, physical therapy, OT. Like, well, the discharge process is also different. Like, some people are not going to go home if you feel like they're not going to do okay at home, right? Insurance covering this medication or not covering this medication, Medicare, Medicaid, those kind of things are like very different. But when you're talking about like the medicine as it is, medicine is the same, I hope, everywhere. Um, and then also like team dynamics, like there are some medical systems that are very patriarchal, like your attending is all the way there and then the intern is all the way here. Here people kind of have like this mutual, obviously you're not going to like be disrespectful for your attendees, but people are not all about like the like hierarchy is not very steep, at least in my experience here. Okay, like I mean, there are some places that you go to that places where we are from that you can even see that when your consultant is in the room. But no, things like that. It's just like sometimes you walk into the room, like, am I supposed to say sir? Like, oh, I'm just kidding, but yeah. So that hierarchy is like different. I think that's like going to be like the first thing or one thing that I would say is the difference. Um, someone said, is this the, the same? Yeah, so when you're asking about management, honestly, yes, like if someone needs insulin, they're going to get insulin, right? If someone is hypertensive, they're going to get antihypertensives. So if you're an IMG and you're worried about like being an older IMG, now that's actually a good opportunity for you to shine. So you're not going to come and act like, oh, you know everything or you have everything figured out because medications can also be like different brand names. Oh my God, that's like one challenge. I think someone asked that brand names. Um, always looking at like what is this medication so many it's just like um at home paracetamol is acetaminophen so nobody goes around saying acetaminophen is paracetamol right and we get what you're saying so here when they try around those brand names i'm always like googling oh which medication is this which medication is that yeah <laughs> anyways so an img with years of experience you will thrive because you know the medicine, you're not, you're not coming to learn the system and adapt that. Um, so that's like one positive thing that people should always like project. Obviously not in a proud way, you're not coming to tell them that, oh, you know everything there is to know, you're not teachable and all of that, but experience is something that is still golden. So if you're that person, that's gonna be like a plus for you. Another question is working and duties. So I think I've kind of mentioned that I have my thing. So for example, on floors, I have to do the notes, my progress notes of my patients. So that's like going to be like one thing that is my number one duty. Some of the communication with the nurses or passing information, like if something is wrong with my patient and or a patient's family says something like, oh, we need to talk to a doctor. I should be the first person to go talk to my patient's family, except it's like a big deal or something complex. I feel like I can't handle by myself. Then I can tell my resident or my attending can be part of it. But I think from um, day to day, to, make, to put it like in the simplest terms, I should know my patients well. Because in a team, we are capped at eight. So I, I, on the busiest day, I have eight patients, eight patients. And then my co-intern has eight, and then my resident has 16. So one person over seeing 16, I should at least be able to know my eight and know them well. Checking the labs every day, checking like 
just knowing your patient, I think that's like the biggest thing. No, I, in my program, nobody's expecting me to be the attending or to like say, oh, this is what we're going to do. Yes, they encourage assessment, they encourage you thinking, but well, someone is presenting me, this is what's happening, what do you think we should do? But the burden of <laughs> helping or the burden of solving all the problems are not on you, right? Someone said like as an intern, you're like the secretary of the team. Well, there's some accuracy in that. So it's knowing your patient, doing the notes. When I was on night, I learned to do admissions when people come in. When I was now on the day, because I had patients, my residence was doing admissions where we were following up on the old people. They, of course, do discharges. Um, there's this thing called medrec when people are going home, where like, they're trying to reconcile the medications that they go in the hospital. What are they going to be continuing on at home? What are you stopping? My senior resident was doing that for me. So it depends on the team, depends on the hospital. But in simple terms, it's knowing your patients. Okay. So hopefully, like when I start doing the, the live content, I'll be able to like talk more about like my um, responsibilities as an, as an intern. But you are never alone. That's just the truth. You are never alone. There is supervision as you need, especially in the beginning. Um, time off sick days. I haven't taken any sick days off, but I think I heard that we have in the program we have five days off. I don't know. I'm not. I'm hoping not to be sick, please, because there's this thing where because we are just nine residents per class. There's this thing where if you're sick, someone covers you and then. And you get better, you cover them. I'm like, this, I don't want to be sick, nobody should cover me. I don't want to cover nobody. Um, my typical week, I've kind of answered it. Interview questions are going to come next week. I'm going to try my best. Um, how am I, have I lost weight? <laughs> I've not lost weight. I think I've added four, four kg. I think, not pounds. I think kg. I've added four kg. I don't think I've lost weight. Um, how am I able to balance work and extracurricular? Honestly, like, it's been... Like, you're able to... When I was on night, yeah... Nights for four weeks straight is brutal because people are coming to work, you're going home. People are out and about, you're sleeping. So I wasn't like necessarily like able to do anything. But now that I'm on, like my first week on primary care, I had two days off, oh my God. Like, it was nice. At first, I'm not even an outside person. So I'm not the type that, oh, I have things to do. But if you're someone that you're very intentional about going out, hanging out, you would find time. As I said again, it's going to depend on the month. So on my, my nights, I was working 72 hours per week. So let's say on average, maybe 75, but at most 75 per hours in the week. On my ED, the time I was working and doing my ED rotation, I was working 40 something hours per um, week. In my primary care week, I'm working at most 50, right? So it depends on the month. The month is always going to make a difference. That's just the, the truth, what rotation you're on. But yes, balance is, Possible is just not going to be possible all the time, but balance is very possible. So, um, for example, in this past week, in this past week, I was able to go to church. I was able to hang out after church and still even get home by six because I didn't have another thing to do. Um, but the moment where I was at night, I was not able to go to church because I was working Saturday and Sunday night and stuff. So it depends, honestly, it depends on the month, depends on the kind of person you are. But one thing that I, I try to be intentional about is I don't go out much. So by myself, I wouldn't carry myself out. But I, my co-resident always like finds somewhere to go. Someone is always hosting something or there is something to go to. So if I'm around, if I'm not on duty, I try to go because those are like chances for me to like go out and meet people or talk to people outside of work. So yeah, and church, honestly, like church is also like one way to meet people outside work. Um, interviews, <laughs> next week, culture shock. Mm, I think this is like the last question. Culture shock. Um, Obviously, I think one thing is communications are different. People are more informal. I think that's the thing I was looking for. There's like more informal communication with your attendants. And sometimes I kind of don't know what to say. I don't know how to. I didn't used to be that person before. I think I'm pretty talkative. A whole different conversation, but in residency, sometimes I struggled with or not being good enough. And so I want to say something and I'll just freeze. I'm trying to like express myself and then I just feel like, oh, what if they're judging me? What if, you know? <laughs> Anyways, but I think it was just my mind doing that. So, and one of the culture shocks would be like how informal people are with your, with your program director, with the people. Everybody's just obviously like respectful, but nobody's holding like any, like no one person is like the, I don't know the word, but nobody's holding like a position to their chest that you have to like, I don't know. So, I think that's like one thing. Culture shocks um, in in US as a whole. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, okay, I think one of the things I, I remember when I came in is they didn't have like the older buildings did not have lights in the living room. 
light was only for the bedroom or something like that. I was like, what do you guys mean? So I don't have lights in my living room. I think I'm not in the toilet. The toilet is weird in America. At least the ones I've seen. So the water of the toilet stays up. I don't know. It's, I, I don't want to cringe. But yeah, I think that was like another thing. But then, yeah, at work, it would be like how informal people are, how liberal, how easy it is to like talk to your attendees and stuff. And when I go out, I'll try my best. Or maybe I even get my co-residents to come on with me. Maybe at the end of the year and talk about like culture shocks in America. But I have not had so much, thankfully. I haven't like had so many. Or maybe I have, but they don't not come into my head right now. So, so I don't make this video more than or longer than it already is or should be. Next week, we'll talk about interviews, tips. Um, I'm not pro, but at least from my own experience, like things that I think would help you is your interviews. And hopefully those daily live vlogs will come soon. I don't want to promise, but yeah, soon they should come. All right, thank you guys for always watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. I love reading your comments. If you have any questions that I have not answered, or if you have something that you think you want me to talk about, please put it in the chat. I will see it, I will reply, and I will try to make a video. As my time, and as able, as I am able. Yeah, that's the word. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.